Hi guys, Kelly here from Body Fit Solutions. What I'm going to do is do a kind of a quick summary of the most important myofascial releases we can do with the medicine ball. So this is a good for big global muscles that tend to get quite tight like our quads and our hamstrings. So this is just to kind of reset the slate. So we want to make sure that there's no tension in the body before we start building strength and stability. So we need a hard ball, a medicine ball preferably. There will be some of the exercises, at least when you start, that you might have to resort to the roller, the foam roller. So please do that. If anything is really not melting, then you want to go back to the foam roller to uh, facilitate the releasing. Okay, I'm going to do a quick summary and then I'd like you guys, once you know the exercises, just to pause the video and you want to do at least two minutes on each muscle group. You might have to spend longer on areas that are a bit tighter, okay? So please feel free to go up to kind of five minutes if you need to, and, uh, and then slowly it will become easier over time, okay? So we're gonna start at the front of the thighs. So we're gonna put our ball right down below the hip. So we start to go into that thick part of the front of the thigh, our quadriceps, and we're gonna bring the ball down here, slightly off center, so we're slightly a little bit over to the outer side. I'm gonna bring my elbow down on that side that I'm releasing and I have my other hand kind of free to be able to push and rotate myself so that I'm not putting too much pressure onto the shoulder. And I'm just finding that first lumpy bumpy bit that feels quite tender. For some of you it'll feel rather painful and if it's too painful that after a few breaths, if it doesn't feel like it subsides a little bit, you might have to go to the roller first, okay? So what I'm waiting for is for the tissue around my thigh to start to melt around the ball. So it's like your ball is making a little indentation into your thigh, okay? Once it does, then you slowly move the ball down and you'll feel another little zone of tightness. So I'm on that side of the leg. And we're breathing in and breathing out. If you feel like it's too much pressure on your shoulders, this is really good for developing some strength in our shoulders, but you might wanna put some pillows under here just so it allows you to rest onto the ball. You might change from kind of both hands up to down. You can adjust your upper body as you need to, but just make sure you are facilitating the release. My other knee is bent off to the side, as you can see, so it's supporting my weight a little bit so I can really drop into the ball. Ideally, you are going down to just before the kneecap in that two minutes. As I said, you might need more time. So make sure you do two minutes on each side of the quadricep, our first one. Good. The next one we're going to do is the side of the leg, the IT band. Okay, so we're going to kind of go superficial side and kind of focus more halfway down the leg, not really up in the hip. We're going to do that in a later stage with our smaller ball. Okay, so we're going to go into the side of the leg and bring our elbow here on the floor. So again, this can be, because it's kind of like a side plank, this can be quite challenging for some people. So we just want to make sure, again, if you need to prop yourself up with some pillows and bolsters underneath you, and we're looking to go side slightly front. Okay, so it's kind of between the quadricep and the side of the leg is where we're trying to get that ball. It can be quite um, angry, this area. I've got my other leg wrapped around in front here, and then I'm just trying to melt. There's probably not as much of a surface area that you're gonna cover here, but everyone's different. So usually in that midsection is where it's the tightest. If it does release a little bit, then we move down slightly towards the knee but you'll probably stay pretty kind of central or within a small little range. Again, use the roller. If this feels like it doesn't let go and it's not relaxing, use your roller, okay? So that's our exercise number two. Pause the video, two minutes. I'll usually do each one about kind of half a minute, 45 seconds. So just have your timer there ready to go, okay? The third one is our gluteals, okay? So we're gonna go right into the back of the bottom and we're gonna have the leg turned out. Now for some of you, that will be enough, okay? Just having your hand on the floor, the leg turned out, and just kind of finding any tightness around the sit bone 
around the side of the bottom and up kind of towards that thick part that kind of runs into our back a little bit, okay? Now if you can, you're gonna take that leg and cross it over so that we put a little bit of stretch into the glutes before we start rolling away, okay? So ease and progress to this stage. This is where you wanna to get to. And then I'm just slowly rolling up and down and around the bottom very slowly. And when I find a little spot, I just wanna stay there and again, facilitate the melt. You probably will need a harder surface for the glutes here um, because they're quite a dense fatty tissue. So the roller probably won't do as much of a job there. If you're super, super tight, then maybe go to the roller for a bit, but then I want you to progress to this ball, okay? So that's our gluteals, two minutes on each side. The next one is our hamstring fold. So it's kind of where the gluteals meet the back of the leg. So it's called the gluteal fold. So it's basically at the bottom of your bottom. Okay, so where your bottom runs into your leg. It's right under your sit bones. So I'm gonna have that leg stretched out and I'm gonna get that ball nooked right underneath my sit bone, right into the start of the hamstring. So this is where we have a lot of tightness where that hamstring kind of gathers into the sit bone. And we're just gonna breathe. I've got my other leg bent. You might even want something to hold on to over here just so that you can uh, support your weight and, and uh, not wiggle wobble. We wanna try and keep a flat back as much as you can so you don't wanna be kind of hunched over it. The more that you can pull the tail back a little bit, the more you're gonna feel that stretch. Okay, and you might just have to very slightly wiggle, kind of more towards the inner part of the leg, more towards the outer part and feel what feels right for you. All right, so that's our hamstrings. The next one is our inner thighs. Now I appreciate this can take a lot of time if you're doing two minutes on each body part. So you might find that you do, uh, you know, four of them on one day and then resume the other four the next day. Okay, I'm trying to think how many We've done so this is inner thighs now so we're kind of going from the groin to the knee so i'm going to lie on one side and then i'm going to place the ball kind of right by the groin and get that ball to nook in kind of right in that inner thigh tissue now you've got quite a lot of muscles in there you also got to be very careful because we've got some kind of nerves and and arteries in there so just make sure it's very fleshy feeling and it's not feeling to nervy, so it shouldn't feel sharp pain. Okay, so I'm going kind of right as close to the groin as I can, and then just finding where it needs to. Usually by the groin is the tight part, and then if you want, you can come down a little bit more to the more mid part of the thigh. Sometimes I just let the foot come off the floor a little bit, just so I can roll the tissue around the ball a little bit and find which part I need to do the most. Okay, so that's your inner thigh. Make sure, you're, of course, you do both sides and just notice the difference. Notice what you're feeling on each body part. Okay, pause the video. Make sure you do both sides. The next one is going to be your quadratus lumborum. So this is the muscle that runs from your rib cage down to your pelvis. It can get quite angry as it's trying to support your spine, and especially if you're very tight. Just tread carefully in this area. You don't wanna be on the spine. And if it feels too uncomfortable and it's not feeling good, just leave this one out and focus on your legs. So I'm gonna start kind of at the edge of the bum, the bottom, so where the bottom and the back meet. Sometimes that can be an area of tightness even in itself. And then I'm just gonna let my back kind of soften into the ball. So into that little space between the ribs and the pelvis. And it is a little bit tender in there. So I'm just gonna rock very gently there. And I might come up towards the ribs. There's a little bit of stickiness there by my ribs. And just breathe. So it's a very slow, you can see I'm doing this very slowly rolling up and down. You don't want to be too aggressive around here. I'm definitely trying to steer away from my spine so I'm on the side of my body and uh, I don't want to be hitting, hitting vertebrae. Also just watch as you go up to the ribs that you don't put a lot of pressure 
on your ribs, so just coming shy of the bottom ribs, super tight there, and breathe. Just make sure all of these exercises you are breathing really well, you're not holding your breath, and that it feels nice and supportive for you. Okay, so two minutes on each side. We've probably done a minute on there. So pursue another minute on that side and then change sides. <clears throat> Good. Now we're gonna go to the front of the chest. Um, if you've got a slightly smaller ball, um, that's hard. Even like a football, a small football or a dog's toy or something like that, that could feel more comfortable for you. Um, I quite like the medicine ball here. So I'm gonna put the ball kind of between the chest and the arm. Just gonna let the arm kind of come to where it's comfortable. I'm almost hooking the ball kind of underneath the collarbone a little bit. So we're in this area of the pecs, okay? So from the chest up into the arms, I'm just trying to get that ball right in that nook there. And this is great for anybody that has a lot of tightness in the front of the chest, desk posture, driving a lot, um, just most of the stuff we do in our day-to-day -day life is in the front of us, okay? So this is just to kind of release any of that tension there. And again, I'm just breathing, just trying to make sure this arm that I'm releasing is not kind of uncomfortable, that it's just locked and that I'm keeping um, circulation going through that arm. So we don't want to be hitting kind of arteries and stuff like that, okay? So just make sure it's tissue. So if that ball feels too big, maybe try and find something that's a little bit smaller for you. Good. Okay, so again, two minutes on each side. So we're gonna go to the calves next. Um, I have a little pipe, but at home if you use a rolling pin, or you can use a hard ball. Um, that works quite well as well. I quite like the, the pipe because we can kind of really find what parts of the calves need more work. So I'm gonna start at the top part of the calf and I'm just gonna roll a little bit inward to the middle and outwards. Now for me, it's more on the outer edge of the calf that I need more of the releasing and I'm just gonna rest the other foot on top to allow it to let go. You might not need that. It might be tight enough just as it is. So just breathing there. And I wait for again that, that tissue to just melt around the pipe or the rolling pin or the ball. So it just lets go of tension. And then once it lets go a little bit, which it has, then I move it down, kind of the mid part of the calf, and I do the same thing. So I roll in, middle, out. It's a little bit more middle now that I'm lower down, so I'm just going to press into that. And just make sure your upper body is nice and happy, that you're not slumped. Okay, and then I just work my way down the calf. So maybe spending kind of half a minute at that top section, another half a minute in this midsection, maybe a little bit longer and then you've got another minute to play with, okay? And I would go right down towards the Achilles side of the, of the leg. So right where your calf and your Achilles meet. And again, I'm just rolling in, rolling out, making sure. And it's not too bad there. So for me, I would just move it back up just a smidgen to where I feel it. And just a little lesson, if anything doesn't feel tight or angry, then skip it. It means that your body doesn't need it, but appreciate that you might have more tension on one side than the other. So it might be that one side of your leg uh, doesn't need a lot of uh, release, but the other side does, okay? So just pay attention to that. Anything that doesn't need the releasing or you don't feel, skip it or don't spend so long on it, all right? Good, the last one we're gonna do is actually in the abdominal wall. So we're actually gonna come down on either side here underneath the ribs. So this can sometimes be an area of tightness, especially if you've got kind of a rounded upper back, um, you sit at your desk a lot, you're in kind of a slumped posture. 
So we're gonna get right underneath those rib cages into a little bit of our rectus abdominis and our obliques. Now I haven't brought the ball over, so I'm just gonna grab my ball. It's a soft, squishy ball. <clears throat> So I've got a little Franklin ball here that has a, a little bit of give, and this ball has a little bit of give, but it's, it's much harder. So this is actually a toning ball, um, and either could work, but I would keep it small rather than the bigger balls that we were using there, okay? So I'm just gonna lie on my front. I'm gonna opt for my Franklin ball because I'm quite tight in this area, okay? Just gonna get that ball underneath the rib cage. I, I tend to bring my body up here so that I can melt into it a little bit. And I just do a little wiggle to get kind of underneath the ribs. So don't be on the ribs. Try and just be below the ribs and make sure you're not in the middle, okay? Where the ribs kind of join, so that's not a very nice place to go. So we don't want to be in the center of the abdominals, we want to be off center. And I'm just doing this little gentle little oscillation and wiggle. Sometimes this can get your organs kind of starting to pump, which is good. You might feel a release <laughs> in your uh, intestinal tract. So don't be worried about that. It might take your breath away a little bit as you come down the abdominal wall because we're kind of getting into the organs a little bit, but you do have fascia around your organs. So don't, uh, don't be afraid to, to go around that area. We tend to have a lot of stickiness in our organs. Um, so it can be a good thing to kind of release and let go. So you can see I'm just oscillating a little bit. If you don't like to oscillate, that's fine. Just kind of rest there and breathe into the ball. And I'm just feeling when I let go and I breathe out that I'm actually sinking that ball into my abdomen a little bit more. So again, two minutes on each side and that completes your kind of superficial fascial releasing, okay? So we've got front of the thigh, we've got side of the thigh, we've got glutes, we've got the hamstring fold, we've got the inner thighs, we've got the low back tissue, we've got the pectorals, and then the calves and the abdominals. So there's 10 different um, areas, so you could split that in half, and do five one day and five the other day. But try and complete this if you've not done this for a good couple of weeks. I would even suggest a month of doing this. And try not to do a lot of anything else. Just walk and just focus on this and you will see such a massive change in your elasticity in your tissue. Good, but good luck with that. Hopefully that uh, serves you really well. If you have any questions, message us below. Um, check out our other videos on our YouTube channel for any other fitness, Pilates, and movement skills that will help you be more functional for life. Thanks very much.